Hello everyone. Welcome to another Connect Spider video. So for those of you that follow the channel, you know that I usually make um, videos that are centered around our Can-Am Spider travel adventures. But it's January 2022 and there's no spidering going on up here in Canada right now. Outside it's cold and snowy. I had originally planned this winter to try and do some video of traveling that we were planning to do, hopefully to someplace warm. Um, obviously that has not happened. Um, if you've been around for the last couple of years, especially in the last couple of months, um, our friend, the COVID-19 pandemic has taken grip of us again. So it looks like we're gonna have to be hunkered down for the rest of the winter. A friend of mine, and he knows who he is, because he's probably watching this, got away early in November and December. He was the smart one. We should have done the same, but it is what it is. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is there is a company called Acaso, and they make action cameras and various other pieces for filming. Um, I have used uh, their action cameras in the past. Um, I still have one of their action cameras and a couple of months ago they approached me and they asked me if I would be interested in testing a camera that they were just going to start offering for sale over here and uh, so I said sure and I just want to say they're not paying me to do this they just sent me the camera so I agreed to do the test. So the camera I'm going to be testing is this little guy right here. This is the Acaso Brave 4 Pro. And it's a pretty good little action camera and I'm going to be showing you all the testing that I'm going to do on it. I'm going to go over all the features, all the things it can do, and then we're going to get it outside and we're going to compare how it performs against the older action camera that I have by this company and uh, take a look at the comparisons and see how they stack up against each other. So. I hope you enjoy my first attempt at a product review and test. Thank you very much for joining me in this and I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to start with what you get with the camera in the box. So we obviously get the camera. You get a waterproof case that the camera slips inside and you can go up to I think it's three meters deep in water. You get a remote control that you can mount on your wrist. You get two batteries like this one and you get a battery charger and a cable that you can use to plug into a USB connection for charging. All CASA cameras come with a really good supply of mounts and I've got them all kind of laid out here. This isn't all of them but I just kind of Put out a representative example of what it comes with. So this one is a clip that goes on the camera that allows you to mount it to tripods or other mounts. Um, this clip in combination with this clip allows you to mount it to clothing if you want or to the strap of a backpack. Got a handlebar mount and various styles of J mounts for, for going into other things. Um, just this is for going on a tripod and these are little adapters. They also give you a little wire tether if you're concerned about the camera falling off of something. And then they give you various uh, Velcro straps. Also, you get lots of these adhesive mounts as well for, to help you to mount it to helmets or other things that you want to, um, that you can't actually clip it to. You can actually do it with a sticky mount. So now I'm going to go over the controls on the camera. This button at the top here is for powering the camera on. It also acts as the shutter release button and the button to start and stop video. So I'm just going to turn that on right now. Two buttons on the side. Um, these are used primarily for navigating through the menus and all the setup functions. Um, that is a touch screen, but you can use these buttons for that purpose as well. The top button, if you press and hold that, it'll turn the front screen on. That is not a touch screen. 
and you can only have the front screen and you know, or the back screen, you can't have both working at the same time. So we'll just go back to the back screen and the back screen is now on. This little kind of an area beside the, the power button is an indicator light for when the Wi-Fi is on the camera. I'll go over the Wi-Fi and the connection to the app later. The microphone for the camera is, I believe, right there, those three dots. So on this side of the camera, we have the various connection ports. The top port is a micro USB connector for charging the camera. It is also where the external microphone connects to the camera. Again, Acaso has gone with a proprietary microphone that is not even available as far as I can see right now for this camera. Um, the microphone that I have for the V50 Pro camera um, does not work in this one. It's a completely different connector. And the port on the bottom is a micro HDMI port for connecting the camera to a TV or a slide projector. And that last slot there is the place where the micro SD card goes. And it'll take up to a 64 gigabyte SD card. The camera has the ability to connect to a mobile device using its own Wi-Fi network. And that is done as follows. The first thing we have to do is turn on the Wi-Fi. And you can see the blinking light on the top there that's telling you the Wi-Fi is active. And then on the phone or the mobile device, it'll eventually pop up. There it goes and we connect to it. So then we flip back over to the Acaso Go app and we connect to devices and there's the Brave right there. And then it connects. Phone confirms that it's connected and the preview of the screen comes up. So you can see if I move the camera around the room, you can see it showing what the camera is seeing. You can also obviously start and stop recording here. You can change modes from photo from, to video and you can control certain settings for the camera here um, on the phone. I have used this on my other Castle camera, the V50 Pro, um, when I've been on the motorcycle. I mount the camera somewhere on the bike and I can control this with the phone um, when it's in a RAM mount. So that's my application of this feature. The available modes in this camera are video, photo, burst photo, you can take time-lapse video and shoot time-lapse photos. And these are all accessed from the little screen on the back, which I've got up in the corner of this graphic. The video resolutions and frame rates that are available are 4K at 30 frames a second, 2.7K at 30 frames a second, 1080p at 240, 120, 60, and 30 frames per second. 720p at 240, 120, 60, and 30. There are four video and photo angles available on the camera. I took a series of short clips to show what they look like. One note here is that when image stabilization is on, in video mode, these angles are not available and the menu item on the back of the screen of the camera is grayed out. The choices are super wide, wide, middle, and narrow. Okay, so the next part of our test is we are gonna actually head outside. And just so you all know, 
minus 13 degrees Celsius. This is what we do for videos in the YouTube world. So what I've done is I put together a little setup here for testing the two cameras, the Acaso V50 Pro and the Acaso Brave 4 Pro. Um, what I'm trying to just show is compare the video between the two and I really want to see the image stabilization between the two. Um, it'll be turned on for both. Um, another thing that I have noticed um, go through going through the setup with the Brave 4 Pro is that it doesn't seem to have an explicit way of doing wind noise reduction. So that'll be another thing we'll be looking for in this test. So here is my little setup. So very sophisticated. I got a little um, selfie stick there, tripod thing, piece of wood. That's the V50 Pro, and that is the Brave 4 Pro. So we're going to head outside and see how that works out. Okay, we're outside. Both cameras are running. I'm just using the onboard mics. I'm not using any external mics on either of the cameras, so, so we can just hear what the sound pickup is like from the normal mic kind of tromping around the property here in the snow. Got to watch where I'm going here. Just going to turn it around. Go for a little walk down this way. There's our snow pile. I think that was like maybe two or three driveway clearings. We had a big blizzard here a couple weeks ago, so let's keep going around. It's cold, but it's a nice day. And I can't really test the wind reduction because there is no wind. Well, maybe a little bit there, not very much. Let's go out the road here for a second. And around. Oh, I felt a little bit of a breeze there. Maybe this will come through in the video. So I'm just going to turn this around again. I hope they're both recording. It's pretty cold out here. Okay, we're gonna head inside and see what we got. Oh, okay. So before I get into all of the summary pros and cons, etc., about this camera, uh, I want to just go back to those clips that you just watched of me outside, and I'm just gonna show you the difference between the audio between the two cameras. As I mentioned in the intro to me going outside, um, the Brave 4 Pro does not have an explicit way to turn on wind reduction. Um, so when I was out for that little walk around outside, um, I had the audio that you heard on the clip just coming from one of the cameras, but I now want to go back in there and I'm just going to show you a very short sequence of when I was walking out to the road and you'll hear the difference between the two cameras, the V50 Pro having wind noise reduction and the Brave Pro not having it. So uh, we're going to listen to that now. Pan around. Oh, I felt a little bit of a breeze there. Maybe this will come through in the video. So I'm just going to turn this around again. Pan around. a little bit of a breeze or maybe this will come through in the video so just going to turn this around so what are the pros and cons of this little brave 4 pro action camera for me i would say it would be value would be the first thing 
for $170 Canadian, you can get yourself into filming with a pretty good little action camera that gives you a wide array of features, filming modes, photo modes, etc., etc. You get a full collection of mounts for the camera, you get a waterproof case, you get a remote control. So it's a good starting point um, for anybody that wants to get into the activity without spending a whole pile of money. At this price point, I thought the front screen on this camera was very good. Um, it's big enough that you can see yourself, it's clear, and it's a really helpful tool if you're doing vlogging type videos so you can keep yourself properly framed in the shot. Another thing that I noticed with this camera, and I actually tested this, was battery life. I ran a test with this camera running at 2.7K at 30 frames a second, and I just let it film uh, in video mode. And it ran for an hour, and I still had 40% battery left. So that is pretty good for the action camera world. So what are some of the cons? Well, I found overall the video to be a bit grainy, um, especially if there wasn't a lot of light. The footage that I took outside that you saw um, came out pretty good because it was a pretty bright day, but overall I found the video to be a bit grainy. Now you could probably improve this by playing around with the various settings in the camera, you know, increasing the ISO, but I just ran everything at default. Um, so that I could get a good measurement against the V50 Pro that I was testing it against. No wind noise reduction. I found this to be strange, as you heard in those clips, um, that this camera doesn't have that. For an action camera, you're going to be using it pretty much always outside, so the lack of wind reduction um, is a negative with this camera. The fact that when you put image stabilization on, you lose access to the other video angles in video mode um, is something I also found to be quite strange as well. So, but um, that's what they've decided to do. I'm sure that could be um, corrected with a firmware update. One big complaint I have with the Castle cameras in general um, is this proprietary microphone setup they have. I have the V50 Pro. It has a proprietary microphone, which I believe works on a couple of, other, of their other cameras, but it seems like every time they bring out another camera, they bring out another proprietary microphone. I think they should really think about going to just the standard three and a half millimeter um, microphone for their cameras. It would make it a lot better. The only other problem I had with the camera uh, was with when I was filming it in 4K30, the files that were generated from that, I could not play smoothly back on my computer. I tried it in my primary video editor, which is DaVinci Resolve, and the footage just wouldn't play. I tried it with iMovie, and the video was very jittery and, you know, it was just not smooth. And then I also tried it inside QuickTime and VLC, and there's just something going on there. So I'm going to reach out to Ocaso and find out if they're interested in seeing the samples that I've got from that, because I did save some samples to send to them if they want it. Um, I imagine, again, this is just a firmware problem that they have to address. The color, I found, color is kind of a personal thing. I found the comparison between the Brave 4 and the V50 Pro to be quite different. The V50 Pro has more of a kind of a cooler, bluer look, and the Brave 4 is a much warmer, darker look. So. Everybody likes their footage to be a different way, and I just want to mention that I did not do any color grading on this footage at all. It was just right out of the camera. Audio on the onboard microphone was about the same. During the outdoor testing that I did, I just sort of picked one of the microphones to have as my audio because I didn't want the mics fighting with each other, um, but I found them to be just about the same, um, so there was no real comparison to make there. 
So that's my review of the Acaso Brave 4 Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that little bell um, so you get reminded when we release a new video. So for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.